Yep, you're seeing that right. On a night of all-star festivities with Justin Bieber and Michael Buble manning the benches behind these teams. We have ourselves an interesting idea talking about a former Toronto Maple Leaf. This was revealed on the Spit and Chicklets podcast earlier this week because, you know, they're at the All-Star event. They have themselves a bunch of extra content going out there. And on January 31st, you had yourselves a podcast interview featuring the likes of a former Leaf and current Carolina Hurricane, Michael Bunting. Now, you know from the title, you know from the thumbnail, you know why we're talking about this here. Bunting, essentially, on his podcast appearance, revealed the reason why everything went the way it did and why he left the Toronto Maple Leafs in free agency in 2023. Before we go over into the comments, though, and talk about the reason, let's go out there and look at the profile, just see how Bunting is doing, see how everything compares to his season before in Toronto. Bunting is 28 years old, 6 feet, 185, left-handed guy, plays in both wings, signs on the end of 25-26, making $4.5 million a year. He had a three-year contract on the open market given out by the Carolina Hurricanes, and this is all coming off of two great seasons with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Bunting, for his entire career, pretty much, was an AHL, NHL call-up kind of guy. He played in multiple seasons for the Arizona Coyotes, but never played enough seasons to fulfill his status as a rookie in the NHL, which is why in 2021-2022, when he was 26 years old, he was literally like one of the oldest guys to contend for the Calder post Sergei Makarov rule, and it stirred up a pretty big debate in that 21-22 season whether or not him or Moritz Sider should have been given the Calder because... Bunting had more points, but Sider was a younger defenseman and he was a lot more utilized, who really knows? But either way, Bunting had 63 points in 79 games played in his quote-unquote rookie year after already playing 26 NHL games in prior seasons, but still. He was good. He then played for the Leafs again in his sophomore season, getting 23 goals and 49 total points in 82 games played. But because Bunting was the complementary piece to the Marner and Matthews line, because he was very good at crashing the net, just being a gritty player, cycling along the boards, and making some good moves, there was demand for Michael Bunting to get a significant pay raise as his career went on. The problem was, the Toronto Maple Leafs may not be the team to go out there and do that. Now, there was a debate as to whether or not Bunting leaving Toronto would be sort of the next Zach Hyman-esque kind of move, because, spoiler alert, take a look at everything Zach Hyman has been doing with the Oilers ever since he left the Maple Leafs, and he has been fantastic. Like, he has become a top goal scorer in the NHL the past few years, just playing alongside of McDavid and Dreisaitl on that power play. It's been good. And there was a question as to whether or not a guy like that would have been more useful on the Toronto Maple Leafs, and whether or not a guy like Michael Bunting was going to exhibit a similar type of path, where he explodes offensively and the Leafs are losing out on that talent, but it's okay because they could use the money elsewhere, but we'll get to that more as the video goes on. Michael Bunting this season with the Carolina Hurricanes has 31 points in 47 games played, and he's on pace for about 53 points, so a decline from his rookie season, but still better than what he had last year. He's also on pace for only 17 goals compared to the 23s that he put up in the past two years. But his contract is honestly pretty good if you consider the fact that he is on pace for 50 points and he's only making 4.5. With this in mind, let's go back over to the Chicklets episode and talk about what Bunting said in regards to his departure from Toronto. Helping us out, we're on HockeyPatrol.com because the article has the transcription of the quote. Links are in the description of both the video, audio, as well as the article. Bunting says this about the decision to leave. July 1st opened up and I wasn't really sure where I was going. Going through that whole process with me in my hometown, obviously I loved playing in Toronto. That's where I come from and I made a lot of good friends there. Obviously the organization is great and the fan base is awesome. With a lot of things that were switching up with the organization, I didn't know where I would stand. It was back and forth and then July 1st hits and I've got to make a decision. Early in the summer, there wasn't really a firm offer. Just preliminary talks and I had to make a decision that was best for me at that time. The Leafs ended up adding Tyler Bertuzzi, Ryan Reeves, and Max Domi to fill the void. 
Now, this is an interesting perspective to hear that the Maple Leafs didn't really give a firm offer to Michael Bunting and his party. Considering that his final dollar amount was $4.5 mil a season, you kind of have to start wondering, okay, talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs and their cap situation. Sure, everybody clowns on them for losing out on Sam Lafferty and using that money to get Ryan Reeves, but if you take a look at that Bunting situation, I mean, look... Ryan Reeves has himself a $1.35 million cap hit, Tyler Bertuzzi has a $5.5 million cap hit, and Max Domi has $3 million. What would you rather have? These three guys at a combined cost of, what's the math on that, 5, 8.5, plus 1.3, 9.3 million dollars? Or... Michael Bunting at 4.5, Sam Lafferty at 1.15, and then you still have an extra $4.2 million in cap space after that. I get it, you could, you know, use the final piece to sign a guy like Domi or whatever, but it's interesting to see how some of these cap shenanigans worked out, especially when you consider whom the Maple Leafs chose over other players. I get it, you could very well say, hey, the Leafs didn't need bunting. Matthew Nyes was going to go out there and fulfill that spot. Whatever shades of bunting were going to be left onto this team would be completely overtaken by the Nyes conversation. But hey, what about the thought of playing Nyes and bunting on the same team? What about saving some cap dollars and, I don't know, just tossing a guy like Nick Robertson more into the rotation? He's scoring a lot of goals this year, it's pretty crazy. So to hear from Bunting himself that not only did the Leafs not consider this, but they straight up didn't give a firm offer to Bunting and his party, it does get kind of interesting as to what the process is with this entire Brad Trilliving experiment. I mean, he's got a vision for the team. We can definitely see that. We understand the identity of what he's trying to build. But when it comes to the nitty-gritty details, I mean... You're prioritizing money and guys like Bertuzzi 5.5 mil. You got Ryan Reeves, who is just up and down with a very odd sort of story this year. And you tossed away Sam Lafferty. You let go of Michael Bunting. There's a conversation to be had here, which is why I wanted to make this video as to how everything went down from the perspective of Bunting himself. Of course, you know, he's going out there saying that the Toronto fans and the team itself, he liked his time there, which is great, you know, standard stuff. But then he's like, yeah, I didn't get a firm offer, so I had to do what was best for me. Sign with whatever team was willing to give me the money, and that just happened to be the Carolina Hurricanes. So let me know your thoughts if you are a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. What are your opinions about the way Michael Bunting ended up leaving the Leafs? And with hindsight included, would you rather have just re-signed Bunting to that contract and diversified their money with a few other pieces? I mean, it's obviously a lot easier to do that with hindsight, but... If everything worked out according to plan, then of course we wouldn't be having this kind of conversation that, hey, there are some guys in the Maple Leafs that you could debate are disappointing. You could say Matthew Nyes hasn't been the best he can be, but of course he's still learning the ropes he's a rookie, so there's not really too much that you could ask for more out of that guy. So, when it comes to Michael Bunting, what are your thoughts on his entire idea of leaving? What are your thoughts on the Maple Leafs themselves not even giving Bunting a firm offer? And do you think this spells well for the way Brad Trilliving and his entire tenure as GM so far has gone. And of course, if you're a Hurricanes fan, what are your thoughts on Michael Bunting? Do you think that he fits in well with your group? Do you like the contract you signed him to? And do you think he's going to come back after a few seasons when he's making 4.5? What's the dollar amount in this future contract? What do you think his role is on the team heading into the next few years? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this. And bye.